What's going on guys, it's Sean here with Gadget Reason and I wanted to do this quick video uh, just to briefly touch on a question I've been getting asked quite a lot which is uh, some of the questions around HDR. So if you've been following the uh, tech industry over the past couple of weeks or months, uh, you've probably noticed that there's a lot of discussion around HDR, uh, Just it's almost become a household name at this point. And I think a big part of that has to do with uh, Microsoft spending a good portion of their keynote for the Xbox One S to really highlight what HDR was and why they were bringing it to gaming and uh, video through Ultra HD Blu-rays um, through the Xbox One S. So uh, with that being said, um, Sony followed up right after that with their announcement of the PS4 being updated uh, to handle HDR as well as the PS4 Pro, which is obviously uh, 4K and HDR um, as well. So um, I wanted to kind of touch on a question I've been getting asked a lot, which is, uh, you know, what do I think of HDR and why is, it, you know, why is it becoming so pop popular of a discussion or a hot topic in the past couple of weeks? So um, the deal with HDR is, is that I personally think that HDR is actually going to be more impactful to the way we consume content over the next couple of years uh, over, say, 4K, for example. Um, a couple of really big reasons for that is, number one, uh, 4K is not going to be widely available uh, you know, through television broadcasting for probably four or five years. That's the reality. So uh, most industry experts are saying that the bandwidth and the processing to create a, you know, a stream of live 4K content, like, for, for example, sports um, is pretty far off uh, down the road. So uh, the other thing is, is that 4K is very dependent upon a perfect ratio of screen size and your viewing distance. If you're sitting, you know, 13 feet away from a 50 inch television, it's going to be very hard for you to really see the benefits of 4K. That's not to say that I'm not a fan of 4K and that I think it's an incredible technology and it is a huge leap forward over 1080p content. The problem is, is that in order to really see all those extra details and the clarity for from the higher pixel density, you really have to be either at a huge screen from 10 to 12 feet away or sitting much closer to a smaller screen. So with that being said, HDR is something that will be able to be appreciated from any screen size, uh, from any distance that you're viewing it from. It has to do with how dynamic the contrast ratio is and how uh, bright and how many, how big of a range of colors you can be produced on the screen at one time. So uh, for those that don't know, HDR stands for a high dynamic range, and it basically is, is doing a, a couple of things. Number one, it's going to create much wider range uh, of difference between the blackest parts of your screen and the brightest parts of your screen. And with, with that comes a much more realistic image. You're gonna have a, a much more uh, dynamic look to images that are popping off the screen due to uh, the colors and the brightness of the, of the lit scenes being much, much more pronounced on the dark, dark background. The other side to that is there's a big difference between the amount of color depth that can be displayed on a true HDR display. So a 100% a uh, HDR premium uh, certified display should be able to display 10 or 12 bit color depth. What this is gonna do is allow for a, a much wider range of colors to be displayed on the screen at one time, which is going to produce an image that's much, much closer to what you see you know, in the real world with, with the human eye. So with those two things being said, um, I just feel like HDR is not only something Something that is going to have a bigger impact on what you're seeing and make everything look much more dramatically different than just going to 4k alone but I also think that in the next probably 8 to 12 months you're going to start to see a lot of HDR content available the reason for that is that it does not take much more processing or bandwidth power for basically for anybody to provide HDR uh, certified content all that's really required is extra metadata in the in the image or in the video feed uh, to tell the HDR HDR display that this is an HDR image and here's where and how you want to display all those extra colors and those brightness and darkness levels. So uh, it wouldn't take much for say Time Warner, Comcast, or you know DirecTV to embed HDR images into their feeds. Uh, and the same can be said for gaming. It's not a big hit on performance to have HDR content added into gaming. So you'll be able to get all those extra richness of colors, the brighter colors, the darker blacks, uh, without having to require the gaming system or the computer to do a whole lot more in terms of processing power. So when you add all that up, I really think that HDR is much, much more of a big deal than 4K is going to be in the next few years in terms of how we consume content. 
Um, so with that being said, uh, my two top picks right now for HDR televisions, uh, you know, within reasonable price ranges. So without breaking the bank and spending $5,000 on an OLED display, uh, my top two picks are the 65 inch Samsung KS8000 series television and the uh, Vizio M70 D3. Those two televisions have very, very different spec sheets and they both attack the HDR uh, problem or go about producing a rich HDR image in very different ways. But if you get down to the nitty gritty of it in a real world viewing side by side comparison, they both produce a very, very acceptable high quality HDR image that you will instantly be able to see uh, a big difference between that image and a standard definition or a, a standard dynamic range image on a, a television you might already own. So uh, I just wanted to get this video out there just to real, real quickly answer uh, some of the questions I've been getting. and. Uh, Hope you guys uh, appreciate the content. If you do, check out GadgetReason.com for more information just like this. And I will be launching a YouTube channel, uh, Gadget Reason, as well here in the next couple weeks. So stay tuned and I'll see you guys next time.